morning folks it is part three of the solar exploration and changeover so we had today is i think with the sun out today again today i think is going to be a wiring update we've got to get all of these wires connected into our new mppt um, and we've just got to finish up on the roof there Get that, uh, get the cables into the trunking, get everything tightened up up there, which will then be the last of the roof work. Um, so we better, without further ado, get on with a bit of work. And just before we go into the detail of day three, while I wait for the posty to turn up, because the posty's got one more wire that I need for the inverter hookup. So the inverter is ready to go. Um, but I just thought for those of you who are thinking about it, I know that in part two we saw a stack of wiring, God knows what going on, but it was just to reassure you that actually it's not, uh, you know, it really isn't that much, um, that difficult to get your head around it and or to try and take it on yourself. You know, if you had any thought of trying it out, then I'd say do give it a go because... Um, when you boil it down, you've only got sort of three components, really. You've only got your two, your two um, or three parts to it. You've got the two panels on the roof. You remember we wired them in series, so uh, the negative wire of one of the panels connects to the positive of the other one up on the roof there. That leaves the positive from one panel and the negative from the other. So down they come, down the roof, in through the hole there, down the side of the van, and straight in, albeit we did a bit of, um, we had to cut a hole in there and that, but the bottom line is the wires just come straight the way into the base of the MPPT. That's that one done. You've then got the two wires, positive and negative, coming from the battery bank into the MPPT. Simple as that, positive and negative. Um, and that, it, that, or those two bits of it, are the solar system, in effect. Um, and then all we've added to that is an inverter. So the solar bit you can sort of fence off because that's all it is, just two panels, two wires, two wires from battery into MPT, MPPT and the technology on the um, little MPPT there does the rest. Um, and then to it we've added um, the two kilowatt inverter from which you have two wires. Um, positive and negative again connected back to the battery so it is actually it's pretty simple when you boil it down to to that um, in between each part so if you take the inverter as one part the batteries as another part obviously and the panels as the third part then you've got the single inline fuse to protect panels to MPPT you've got the single inline fuse to protect the MPPT to the batteries and you've got the single inline fuse to protect the inverter back to the batteries so three fuses three connections and jobs done really so before uh, before we get as I say into the final bit of wiring up and all that um, then I thought I would just drop it down diagrammatically because it does hopefully simplify it for you if you're thinking out there thinking about doing it, which is, I was exactly the same um, a couple of months ago when I had those quotes in for 4 or 5k. Um, if you're thinking of doing it yourself, then really it is very straightforward. Uh, obviously, yeah, you've got to do a bit of solar school perhaps. Um, that was my good old um, Will Prowse book that I mentioned in part one. Um, and then the price there, I promised you I'd take you through the price. So um, the um, so the sort of component parts, that was probably the most expensive um, in terms of single cost, uh, that was two three nine. Um, the uh, the solar panels, the one seventy five watts, they were one sixty one each, so three two three. Um, and the uh, then the next bit, I guess, would be oh the MPPT itself was just over a hundred hundred and eleven. Um, the brackets. 50 or 60 quid um, it's all energy that so you can certainly have a look at their site and you know perhaps spec up what you're thinking about doing 830 pound and 88 pence and then to that uh, the only thing to add to that you remember I just said I was waiting for those cables and the comments I made 
um, I had seen a review that that you want to go big on the cables from inverter um, back to battery. So I've uh, ordered separately some bigger, some thicker cables, um, and they were about 30, 30, 33 quid. So you've got to add that to your eight thirty. So about eight sixty for what um, for what takes me from a hundred watt to 350 watts to much more efficient use of that 350 watts i.e the mppt which are more efficient than the pwms um so i think that's um it's got to be worth exploring a if it saves you that much money but b it's just a fun project to do um it's taken to get us to this point start of film three um it's taken about two and a half days to be waiting just to do the final wiring in there so it's not um again it's not a huge time consumer uh, but anyway that's the uh that's the pricing and um hopefully a bit of the just the basics as to um as to what the system consists of for those you think about it give it a go it's not that difficult you can do it you know you can definitely do it and as well, there is an equation for everything. So, so uh, there's uh, there's stuff online, there's stuff in the book there, there's stuff on Renergy's website or any other of your chosen solar suppliers. Um, but there's stuff on the website which tells you the equations for how big the wires need to be, eh, how big the wires need to be between inverter and battery, between batteries and MPPT. There's equations for uh, what size the fuses are. So you can literally work it all out using all those bits and pieces and spec your own full system. Job done. So back up. For hopefully the last time today. Onto the roof. Look at that. What a lovely Tembi sunny day that is, isn't it? Fantastic. Right. So let's go and make sure everything's set all right. So I put a little bit more sealant around this last night or yesterday afternoon. It's picked up loads of debris from the uh, neighbouring hawthorn trees. But uh, that's solid as a rock now. That was the old hole that came in with the old solar cables. Put a different housing up there, restuck it. And uh, time to just tighten all this up. And then we'll run the cabling through the trunk in. And, uh, and that's JD up here. Right, wires trunked. Sorted out, that's tightened up. All sealed up, so that's it. That's the roof bit done. Time to get the uh, patented weighing down toolboxes down. And uh, and that's us done for the roof. So what we've been doing um, is starting to sort the wiring out. So we've got, you remember on the roof up there, we've got the solar panels with an inline fuse on the positive coming in through the van down the side here into the uh, they're going to eventually that's these two wires here they're going to go into the bottom of the charge controller for the PV but the first thing you do when you connect up is you connect the battery to the MPPT first that's an absolute must because otherwise you can damage the unit if you go solar straight into MPPT before you've done the batteries so a must must connect battery tray cables into MPPT first um, but just as there is an inline fuse up on the roof with the panels, so there is an inline fuse here as well for more, more system protection. Um, so I've put an A&L fuse in there, which matches the controller basically. So that's a 30 amp fuse in there. So we're connected with the live onto uh, obviously the positive side through the inline fuse and then off into the base of the MPPT here into the positive. So what we got when we connected everything up, it's just fired up itself, which is incredible. I thought when I fired it up, it would probably switch the radio on or something. <laughs> but, <laughs> or the van would start, but, <laughs> but, but it hasn't done that. And actually it's, uh, it looks like it's doing what it's uh, supposed to. So as soon as you connect the battery up, it automatically powers itself on and starts to detect. Well, the first thing you have to do with this, um, as he says with his uh, manual down there on the floor, um, is you have to make sure it's set for the right type of batteries. Um, so obviously I've got those two um, Platinum AGMs down there. Um, so I've obviously got to get the right setting um, to make sure that the MPPT knows what it's communicating with. Already, though, it does look as though it's 
picking up and measuring voltage in the battery. So there's a plus. The radio didn't come on and it looks like it's measuring batteries. So, so, so it's a, that's a significant plus. And so now we've wired in the two PVs, positive and negative from the solar panels. That's the, uh, this little green one on the end here, that's the temperature probe which eventually goes down onto the batteries. And this one just here, that's the um, data cable which uh, you remember goes up to the little Bluetooth module there which hopefully will mean I can phone connect. I've not tried linking yet. So all wired up, let's just try and get it back onto these, um, it just sits on these screws which is quite easy then because you can lift it on and off quite easily um, when you do the wiring process. Right, that's just lining up the holes and then it's just a case of, there we go, that's just notched in nicely. Just see there, it's gone up to the top of those, uh, top of the screw threads and the narrow bits, so that's slotted into place. And we've got the cover back on the, um, cover back on the underfloor heating. Uh, that's our, and that's our cutoff switch for the inverter when we've got that lot log uh, got that um, connected into the uh, into the battery case here or into the battery lock I should say so again we've got some lights on we've got we've actually got a solar light flashing so I need to go and find out what that means now hopefully it's good news and so it tells me that uh, white slow flashing means the controller is undergoing boost stage so that's good so it's definitely recognizing the solar panels fantastic so and now another exciting bit we've got the uh, downloaded the uh, Renergy DC home app and fired it up and then uh, straight away you can see the uh, little Bluetooth module up there started flashing you clicked plus in the top right hand corner there and it went and searched for, picked up the device up there, which is obviously the Bluetooth module that's plugged into the, you remember, back into the MPPT. And lo and behold, look at that. Eight o'clock at night and we are getting some charge coming in. It's all working. And the radio is still off. It still hasn't switched that on. <laughs> so, so we are getting there. We have power. Even at eight o'clock at night. Right, well that's grand. Um, need to get everything tightened down there. Get the wires tidied up in there. Ready for the um, ready for the inverter to go back in. We're waiting for one more to, cable to be delivered from the inverter. We've got these monster things. These are massive uh, one o gauge um, cables. Huge things. Um, and as I said before, the ones that they supplied, I had read on the reviews on their product page that one or two people saying that their, their cables that they supplied, which were for AWG, AWG being American wire gauge, just a measure of wire thickness, um, saying that they weren't um, thick enough because they got a bit warm. So I obviously did a bit more searching around and found a few sites where it said um, what size is your inverter, what sort of power have you got coming into it, and all of it pointed at uh, one o. It's like one oblique zero gauge wire, <coughs> which is this uh, big old thick stuff. I think it's about 50, 50 square millimeters is the actual profile. But um, I'll put links to the sort of products that I got in the description down below and or to all these different component parts. And of course, you remember what I also said was the one we took out of here, that PWM controller. I had never, even when we were on the drive like this, I had never seen it showing that it was operating. So um, you'll remember I did, I've obviously bypassed the fuse that was here, the solar fuse, and come straight in with the wiring from the roof. But so whether there was some wiring that's in there that wasn't even connected, who knows, but um, it certainly wasn't very effective um, and uh, and actually I never saw it working either either here on the drive or indeed uh, in Europe where uh, in temperatures of 30 or 40 degrees you'd have expected it to to have some sort of uh, some sort of showing on the panel but but uh, no it kept itself a mystery and um, and it's now lodged at the nearby recycling 
because it's not much good on this fan. Okay, the postie has been. So I've just had this little short cable made up. That's a really good company, actually. Um, just as a quick matter aside, it was um, Electrical Car Services, who are based in Essex, ECS, Electrical Car Services, and you can basically specify the size of wire you want, um, how long, uh, which type of endings you want on it, um, whether you want an inline fuse in there, uh, which I ha which if I hadn't got the fuse already, I'd have uh, I'd have done that way. So, yeah, great for uh, getting bespoke wiring done um, for a pretty reasonable price, twenty odd quid, something like that. Um, so uh, anyway, that's the last piece of the equation. So let's get everything connected up to our um, inverter, and then it will be time for an inverter test. How exciting! There we go, that's the uh, inline fuse fitted in, cover back on, and um, now we need to try and get the uh, negative on. So, time to kill the batteries, cut all the power, as we're going to do a bit of work to connect up the uh, positive and negative to the battery bank. So, that's the um, positive and negative down at the back of the inverter with those monster cables thanks to the posty delivery today so all that remains to do is to test it so dare we switch it on right let's do it there we go oh yes we've got power that's good and i've brought it out nikki's hair dryer is gonna get a test Here we go, stand clear, the van might take off, or it'll work. Whoa, is it hot? Does that feel hot? Let me know if it's uh, warm air. Yes, look at that. Wow, hurrah. And look, I've got the um, got the solar wrap running, so that's telling. I don't know whether you can see that. There we go. Solar wrap running. We've got uh, 84 watts coming down at the moment. And let's just have a look. Yeah, 6.45. 87 watts coming down at the moment. Not very. It's a bit dull. Rain forecast, but. That's pretty good, I'm liking that. And let's just see what my lights are showing here. Yep, yeah, that's the, um, that there's the power button. Second one down is the power, top one is the solar. And continuous white means it's in charging mode, bulk charging mode they call it. So that confirms what we're, what we're looking at on the app there. Fantastic. 6.15 amps, 83 watts coming down. And then uh, when you click on the actual device, you can get some more detailed information there. And then, in fact, while I've, while I've got it there, if you can see that, um, you can look into history on the app. And that shows you, um, shows you the fact that we've been connected for two days battery vault how much we've generated so yeah loads of uh, loads of data heaven for me pl pl plenty of plenty of data to look at looks like you can interrogate it by month and uh, next month and last month fantastic like that indeed and the settings is uh, incidentally let me just drop into that again the settings that just gives you options um, of where you can set your battery and uh, so you set your battery type and things like that um, and the different options there and the different settings that you get on the app so that looks like yeah we're running pretty well there 
fan looked fantastic. Yeah, liking that. So we've got the uh, we've got the inverter running, which was the last bit of the equation. So now, apart from a tidy up, we've got to get my new uh, new lid that we made. If you remember, I made a new lid for the top here so that the whole section came off rather than that little bit in the middle uh, which allows me to get this or work on this if I need to and slide it in and out. I've uh, dropped in just a single right down the side there you can just see it down there dropped in a single um, screw just to hold this whole thing in place so it doesn't give it a wobble now it doesn't move at all um, but also just the fact that it's uh, just a small screw there means it's uh, relatively easy if I've got to just slide it out, just pop that screw out. Hopefully it won't need to do much. Well, until of course, until of course, it's time to get the lithium in there, which will be um, a real plus. So very much looking forward to that. Getting rid of those two batteries probably and trying to find perhaps one lithium if they'll fit or otherwise it might have to be two smaller lithiums depending on uh, on what size they are to fit the battery locker. Right, unplug that. I can't believe that. I'm just going to have to try it again just to make sure it did actually work. It did. <laughs> well... Let's finish off these last few bits. Get the van tidied up a bit, get the battery uh, battery cover back on, on the terminals, and generally make sure everything's tickety-boo and cables are tucked away. Right, let's get that, uh, let's get the lid back on. There we go. Some uh, pop some screws in. There we go, cushion back on, new inverter at the side, Bluetooth just in sight there but with that cushion back on its Velcro at the back there, then um, not much wiring showing and uh, had a hoover up down there, needs a bit more here and there, a bit of dust being flying around the van so that we get it back to its travelling glory. And just to prove that I do occasionally get my arse in gear and get cleaning, I cleaned all the, um, the top here, but of course through the side I could see that all the windows underneath were minging. So I've come up and opened all the windows and now we're going to get those minging edges that are under the hatches, get them cleaned up as well. And then it's a bit of, then it's a bit of myrrh on the roof. Fantastic stuff, lasts for years. Look, and I've even got some Croatian pine needles. Look at that, fantastic memories. <laughs> but I guess it's time, it's time they went though. That is looking a bit better now. And there we go. God, talk about a workout. That is a coat of myrrh. It literally will last, or it makes washing obviously the van really easy. As you saw, it's pretty quick. Um, but it literally lasts like a, you wouldn't have to come up here for even a year, but it's like a three stage wax process. But because I've done the first two stages a while back, uh, then I just put the finishing wax on the top and um, it does, you'd never know. You'd never know I'd been mullering the solar up here, would you, from the mess that was there earlier. Um, used a little bit of that, um, that little bit of that um, cleaner that cleans off the sort of um, 
Sikaflex residue. So that got rid of all that over there. And then uh, all the window jams, everything. Good grief. In fact, I think there was even some French leaves there from Le Lavendou about a year ago. <laughs> we've, been, we've been storing nature from around Europe in the window jams. Anyway, job done. I'll be glad not to be back up this ladder for a little while. And you can just see down at this angle, you can sort of see the shine that it gives the wax coat. Fantastic bit of kit that is. Used it for years on, you name it. It doesn't like um, the sort of black plastic trim, so I avoid that, but anything chrome, gloss, glass, uh, I don't put it on the actual windscreen itself because obviously it's too waterproof for the windscreen wipers, but um, yeah, really nice finish that is. So I've now got to pass the test. Nikki's arrived. You <laughs> missed a bit. <laughs> yes. Oh, the it's looking amazing. Yeah, I know it does. It. You'd never know. I'd been Muller in the van, would you, eh? No, you've done a great job, and those panels look amazing. Yeah, it is. It's a good, uh, a good little addition, a good little addition. So roof cleaned down. It's been inspected and passed. Yes, it gets to tick. <laughs> it's. Oh look, somebody's put, I nearly missed that, it was so well camouflaged. <laughs> somebody's put an inverter there. <laughs> so, and just to prove that the van isn't always a building site, we've put it back together again and it's, uh, it's in one piece. <laughs> what well, I'll be. Okay, so the last week or so I've been a solar panel widow. <laughs> um, I've just got my husband back, uh, but uh, more importantly, we've got an amazing solar system fitted. So, that's yeah. rather, rather good. Yeah. Not only was it was Nikki a, a solar widow for solar school when I was on YouTube for hours with a set of headphones on, but uh, and reading that very exciting Will Prowse book. Joking aside, it is actually very good <laughs> if, yes. you, if you want to learn about solar. Yeah, fantastic. Yes. But then, then for the last three days, while I've been up the ladder on the roof, sliding around, it's uh, she's still been a solar widow. In fact, the downside of putting that mer polish on the roof was that it, because we're on a slope here on the drive, it was so slippery I was going backwards down the roof once I was uh, trying to crawl across the bit I'd done. So yes, if you're on your roof and you've mer polished it, then uh, don't end up sliding off the end. Yes. Yeah, preferably. Preferably, mm. yes. Well, so anyway, that was the uh, three projects. The van is back in one piece. It's all back together and um, it was, uh, it was a good bit of fun. And of course, it's always that thought in your mind that, well, if I had a quote for four or five K, then, uh, then uh, it's always nice to save a few pennies, isn't it? But more yeah. especially, nice to just dive in and have a go at it. You can do it, you know. You can do it if you're thinking about it. If you're thinking about it, yeah. And we're looking forward to using it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll cool. uh, keep you updated, obviously, with how it goes. No doubt you'll get a bit of data readout knowing me from uh, from the phone as to what it's what it's producing and or has produced uh, particularly when we get down into uh, France a little bit later on um, in sort of June July time so uh, yeah very much looking forward to seeing it on full power yes indeed yep so we'll say goodbye for now and we'll see you on the next film take care guys bye, bye. now bye, bye.